Are you kidding me? I can make that thing myself. There's got to be a Raspberry Pi in here somewhere. Uh, I can shrink that down. Oh no, relays. Switches, no. Good. Oh. Uh, key switches. Alright, I'll get this piece of junk going. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You saw a 3D printer and you thought, yeah, right, it's cheaper to build if you have a 3D printer. It's not the case. Yeah, I chose to design these parts in a CAD software and then print them out because I happen to have one. But I really want to stress though, you don't need one to do this. You can use off-the-shelf parts with a sprinkle of creativity and you'll have functionally the same thing. You can see I drew a box here, but you could just use a sheet of plywood, MDF, polyurethane board, whatever you have lying around. It's yours to use and you can make it how you want to use it. Then for mine, I made a top piece for the box, but again, you can simply drill holes into the box or chisel them out and glue your key switches in place, whatever will hold it all together. And finally, for the buttons, you could use standard keycaps from a mechanical keyboard. I'm using mechanical keyboard switches. I just wanted to be over dramatic and design this one and then roped a friend in to help 3D print them with his better 3D printer. Well, surprise, surprise. It doesn't fucking work. See, the best part about printing an SLA is, is that it doesn't work. It went a little better on my end. The beauty of this is that you can use any kind of button you want. In this case, I'm using mechanical keyboard switches because A, I'm seeing them used in the retail version of the Hitbox controllers, B, they're fairly cheap in large quantities, and C, there's a lot of keycap designs available for the Cherry Key Scan. What the hell is this? But you could use a full arcade buttons if you wanted, whatever button you have, as long as it's electrically normally open. You can Google that for more information if you're wondering what that means. What I'm saying is though, it doesn't need to be perfect. If you can use it and you like using it, that's good enough. Okay, so everything has been printed out. These are the parts that I need to sort of make it work. And again, this is sort of a rough prototype. Um, this bottom piece took 12 hours, despite it being simple. I suppose it's just that the, um, the first plate was very thick. Um, so it took a while to print. That's 12 hours here. This was six hours here. And then, um, 18 hours, and these were about two hours or so, give or take, to do these um, little discs. So we're looking at roughly 20 hours to just print the whole thing. Um, not a great timing to <laughs> manufacture it. I thought it would take a lot less time, honestly. But uh, something to consider if I were to make another one, I would try to make it simpler, probably less of a box, more lower profile, maybe a lower profile switch. Um, but either way, the next step that I'm at is I am getting rid of what they call in 3D printing a little bit of elephant splitting, and it's not super severe. I'll zoom in here, try to show you the best I can. So, on the bottom of this here, this is just a slight bit thicker than the, than the rest of it, and now this outer rim doesn't matter, but this inner square does, um, <clears throat> because the switches aren't going to fit in very well with that inner little bit of that extra lip. So I'm just cutting it off like that. I'm doing that on all four sides. If I were to do this again, I would reconsider the design because this it just takes too long. There's too much manual labor and preparation in this current like proof of concept. But again, it's in the name, it's a proof of concept. I wanna see if this works well. And if I decide to make a more refined one, um, then I'll, I'll think about these sort of steps and how it can be made a lot easier and more streamlined. All right, so I'm gonna pause and not bore you with me slowly shaving that off and see all the shavings everywhere, and I'll get back to you. All right, don't mind the noise of the HVAC, I'll be speeding this part up anyways. Um, but now what we're gonna do is glue in all of these holders. So it's gonna be tedious, another tedious job, <laughs> duly noted. All right, let's get to it.
All right, so I've started it up with this uh, <laughs> ribbon right here. It's too bad there wasn't a gap in between those. Um, and then I'm just gonna attach that, attach it to this bus bar, I'm gonna call it. It's a bar for ground. So this is gonna be all ground, and I'm gonna have separate wires going to each pin on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Now, I think if I were to do this again, because this is, again, like I keep saying, it's a prototype. Um, if I were to do this again, I would definitely have made this sort of hot swappable. You could switch the buttons around on maybe like a, a breakout board. <clears throat> but for now, I'm going to hard solder them in. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, it's going to be boring. So it'll probably be another fast forward. And we'll go through that during the grounds. So I went ahead and finished soldering off camera because it was just, I feel it's getting a little bit too boring and repetitive to watch. Um, all it was was a bunch of wires on the bottom. So just a, it's just an empty box with a Raspberry Pi at the bottom and then all these wires over here. So we got kind of like a, look at this in the light a little bit here. We got kind of like a, a bar with all the grounds and it all goes to one wire, the Raspberry Pi. We got our ABXY. I have to try to color code them a little bit, but um, turns out that these start and select ones you'll see aren't wired up. It's what I get for just trying to do this as cheaply as possible and picking stuff I have lying around off the shelf. Um, these are normally closed buttons, so they were constantly being pressed and just making this thing bug out whenever I try to use it. So I decided those for now, and I've ordered some more switches to replace those. Um, but overall, I gave it a try. I don't have actual um, caps for this yet, the buttons themselves, because those are going to have to be resin 3D printed, and I don't own a resin 3D printer, but I do know someone who does, so I'll take advantage of that. Now, this stuff's actually incredibly toxic to humans. Like, more toxic than most plastic, I guess, inhaling fumes from paint. be more toxic but uh, instead I'm just gonna put it in my sink and tell myself that when I clean the sink I won't be eating it so I'll put it on the dirty side um, point being I gave it a try anyways um, and started being numb in the fingertips trying to actually play a game with this. It works fairly well. Um, it's, it's a great open source community that they've got going for the Raspberry Pi, so that really made it possible here. Um, 
But yeah, I, there's definitely some revisions that can be done to this. It probably could be thinner, maybe on a PCB, um, different switches maybe, uh, rounder edges. This, I'm going to try sanding this in just a minute because this really, I know like you play it like this, but especially given how small it is, you can't really rest your pawns like you're supposed to sort of play it like this. Um, but yeah, I gotta sand the corners a little bit. I'll try making a, a, another revision of this for sure down the line and try to really refine this design. Maybe later I'll get different switches because these brown ones are like a little bit, a little bit too clicky for my liking. But either way, um, that should do it. Let's go to testing it out. I neglected to mention that the heart of this whole project is the GP2040-CE uh, project right here. It's completely open source. Um, it's under the MIT license here, and it works with more than just the PC. You can do it right as it says here, PC, PS3, PS4, Nintendo Switch, Steam Deck, Mr., and Android. I'm sure they're probably working on other platforms as well. Um, and they say it gets pretty good performance, but either way, um, I'll have a link to this page below as well as anything else I mentioned that's linkable, I'll try to link as well. Um, but you want to go to download and then pick out whatever board you're using. I got the Pico in the demonstration. I got a wave share here, so hold down the boot button on whichever one you're using, and then plug it in, and it'll come up like that. And so when once you get this folder here, it's got the TXT, all those information, you're just going to download whichever model you're using, put it in downloads, and all you have to do is copy that CF2 right on over as if it was a USB thumb drive, give it a second. It takes a minute sometimes to flash. And then once that's done, you can see that it disconnects. And so just to be safe, I'm going to unplug and plug it back in. Usually it's safe to just leave it plugged in, but I'm going to unplug it, plug it back in. And when we switch for controllers, so set up game controllers, this is Windows, of course, it should show up. I'm not seeing it here. One minute. Setup USB game controllers. There it is. It took a minute to configure. Sometimes you have to unplug it, plug it back in. Um, and of course, I don't have any buttons soldered up to this example I'm doing right now, but it would show up here and you'd be able to test all those individual buttons. Anyways, let's go get back to the actual project. Okay, so with the buttons on, there's actually two problems that I've observed with this. A, there is sort of a misdesign in that they're not actually reaching the bottom of the stem, so they could be a bit longer. Two, they're not super stable. So, especially you can see on some of them in the back, they're starting to give way and they're sort of tilting around. A, it's probably because they're not sitting as far down as they can. B, there's not a lot of room on them, so the stems are degrading. And see, I think I was talking to the guy who made them with me. And there could be a skirt around the edge, maybe, that might help stabilize them a bit. So I've made all those changes, and I think I'm going to print those out first. And then test them again and see what I think. Overall, it's a good first start. But I think that it could be improved um, a little more. Because I did find while I was playing it, you would get something like that happening. So I'll try again with the new revision I just made and we'll get right back to you. So here's the final product. I'm going to go over some of the changes that I made between cuts. Here are the two start and select buttons that I swapped out that are now normally open. I don't know why I have normally closed switches but whatever. They're also flusher so they're easier to push. Um, we did some revisions uh, for the 3D printing of these caps. Like I said, there's going to be a skirt. I've also reinforced the mounting on that little plus that's the, carry, uh, the Cherry's key stem. Um, so that's got a nice box and that perfectly meets the tolerance of the stem itself. The problem is it's a little too perfect, so sometimes um, it'll sort of catch on that square opening. I think the solution to that would just be to sort of uh, taper, chamfer, whatever it happens to be that would make it a little more round, whatever, sort of have to experiment with it and see what works, um, just so that the edge is a little rounded and it enters that square hole a little smoother. Because sometimes when you're giving an input, it will just try to sort of replicate it on the edges here. Sometimes it will, it's not doing it, but sometimes it'll catch um, 
on the key stem itself and not enter very smoothly or a little and then you have to push a little harder so you sort of miss an input or your input's a little delayed which isn't too great um, but the biggest Achilles heel, the biggest problem with this thing and I'll show it to you right here so sort of sitting normally that's where your hands are um, it's not fantastic you've got your wrist bending out like this and this is sort of for two reasons you got this problem A, I would have to print this in two halves to make it larger so that I could actually make something more comfortable or I could have printed these buttons on an angle more like the um, the snack box does so that you're bending your wrists or sorry you're bending your elbows not your wrists but in this case because it's perfectly straight and it's small for the build volume of my 3d printer I have to bend my wrists so I don't really think I'm going to use this much as more of a learning tool I may reuse some of the parts but definitely not the shell um, because you're, you're bending your wrists really extremely um, and so I, I found that they would get actually fatigued in just quite a few minutes of playing you would feel fatigue on your wrist and, and I've already got pretty small hands so I couldn't imagine someone using this but what I do think I will use is this controller right here and that sort of plays home to the part that I was saying in the beginning you don't need to 3d print something and this is just I made that as an example and probably will be the main one that I use you can put in your own buttons, whatever your buttons have to be, and solder them up to your Raspberry Pi or one of the Raspberry Pi um, knockoffs, so to speak, um, and just use it as a controller, perfectly fine, just like that. Um, you can see, it works just as well. Um, I'll try to zoom out a little bit. It was extremely hard to kind of get these in frame at the same time. But anyways, um, the point is is that you can make whatever controller works for you. Um, you can measure it out. I traced my fingers individually on this and um, drilled out the holes. It doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg and you get something custom to you. So this is probably smaller than most controllers where the button placement is. You're not going to be able to get that um, commercially. And, you know, like I said, it doesn't cost you very much. Um, especially if you've already got the tools. If you don't already have the tools, um, well, you can improvise. I mean, you can make it out of cardboard. It doesn't have to be something special. And when you decide that you like a certain layout, then maybe you'll want to, maybe you will want to buy a commercial one. But it's, it's a good way to know whether you're uh, deciding something. Myself, I've never really played many fighting games. So to me, this is a great way to get into it without having to invest a bunch of money into a controller. I want to put the money into the games. But anyways, hope you found this somewhat interesting. Um, and I'll see you next time.